Today we're doing the first spring pre-emergent application and we're about to start right now. Hi everyone, Rob the Average Lawn Guy. Thanks for tuning in. For those of you who are new to my channel, I will do a series of do-it-yourself lawn care. In order not to miss out on any of this, subscribe now, hit that notification bell. So today we're doing our first spring pre-emergent application. I have a little bit of period where I have no rain coming in for the next two days. And as you can see here, we have two days of no rain here, but the next four days we're gonna have rain. The forecast calls for light to moderate rain, so this is the perfect time for me to apply the pre-emergent application. So just a few things about the pre-emergent. First off, you need to apply it to a dry turf. It's very important to apply it to a dry turf, only because you want to make sure that turf is not saturated. So once you apply it to a dry turf, first thing you want to do after you apply it is really to water it in. So because I have rain in the forecast, I'm using mother nature to my advantage to help me water it in. But it's very important not to apply this when you're expecting a very heavy downfall. Again, you don't want this to wash away. There are some pros and cons to granular pre-emergence. And today I'm using the Lesco 007. One of the things you need to be mindful about granular pre-emergence is that it is susceptible to wash off. So if you apply it and then you have a heavy rainstorm, there's a good chance that that will wash away. So you want to be careful with that. The second thing you want to watch out for with granular apps is the dispersion pattern. You want to make sure you're dispersing it correctly and evenly throughout the entire turf. But even with the best dispersion rate, you're still going to have some gaps in coverage. So be mindful of that. So because I'm applying the granular pre-emergent, it's very important in about four to six weeks, you come back and reapply again. Now what you choose to use is really dependent on you and what you can afford. There are different pre-emergent granulars out there that you can get. Some of them have really good dispersion pattern. Some of them, the pill size are small, others are large. So remember, the larger they are, wider the space you're gonna have. So the smaller the pill size, the more even coverage you can have. But for that small pill size, you're gonna pay for it. So I've had good success with the Lesco 007. You can also use the Sunnyland 007. So if you have a little bit of weeds, I would go ahead and use the Sunnyland 007 just because of the active ingredient, Dithiopia. So Dithiopia has early post-emergent control a very small baby crabgrass. So if this is your situation, go ahead and apply the Sunnyland 007. But because I don't have any weeds in the lawn, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Lesco 007 and then come back in four to six weeks and reapply. I can choose to reapply another granular or go liquid. Keep in mind with liquid apps, you're gonna get superior coverage and you're gonna be able to cover the entire turf without gaps. That combined with the granular will give you very good control of weeds. So as you can see in this clip, I have very little weeds in the lawn right now. So because I applied the granular and came back around with a liquid app of Podiamine 65WDG, I have a video listed right here on exactly how to apply that. Now I had a little bit of rain early this morning, but there is no more rain coming in for the rest of today and tomorrow. So the ground should be dry enough to apply my granular application. You wanna get your spreader ready, and if you're using the granular application, you wanna pour your granulars over a cement walkway or concrete. Don't pour it over the grass. You just don't wanna spill anything on the turf. Now the good thing about the Lesco brand that I love is that it's very homeowner user friendly. They have the instructions in the back and it's essentially divided into 2.7, 4.0, and 5.3. Those numbers are the pounds per thousand square foot rates that you would apply to your lawn. On the very bottom where it says the application rates, you want to decide which turf grass you have. Whether you have a northern grass or you have a southern grass, you pick the exact turf species you have and then you follow the recommended rates. For me, I have a Bermuda grass, so I'm looking to put down four pounds per thousand square foot and on the rotary spreader instructions four pounds per thousand square foot because i have the scots deluxe 
edge guard, I'm gonna set that down to about 5.5. Now you may have to adjust it up or down depending on how much is coming out, but it's nothing to it. The only thing you need to know is how much square footage you're looking to treat. And to get that, you essentially go to Google Maps, plot in your address, and then you square it off. Once you square it off, you can get the exact measurements of your lawn. It's not an actual exact measurement, but it is a good estimate. So once you have that estimate, you'll know exactly how much you need to treat. For me, I'm looking to put down four pounds per thousand square foot. And you can see on the right on the comment section, it calls for a repeat application after a minimum of four weeks. And I said it before in my videos, two applications are needed in order to get good control. So first app is right now. My second app will be in four to six weeks. So I know many of you are experiencing heavy rain right now. If this is your situation, you want to wait until you apply your pre-emergent. Wait until you have a couple days of dry weather. Remember, the ground needs to be dry or semi-dry, not saturated, because once you water the pre-emergent in, it's going to go down and it needs to get down into the soil. So if the ground is saturated, the pre-emergent is just going to run off and not get down to the soil to get that protection. So wait as long as it takes until you get that dry period of two to three days of no rain in the forecast. And remember, once you apply the pre-emergent, especially granulars, you have to water it in. It is not going to be effective if you don't water it in. So how do you know if your ground is dry or wet? Well, I took a footage a few days ago when the ground was wet. So let's take a look at that. So that's how wet ground sounds like. So here's what dry ground sounds like. You can hear the difference. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. With that, thanks for watching. Take care.